Okay, this video is gonna be jam-packed with information on how to be a pilot fast from start to finish, airline pilot edition. Let's get started. You know what, screw the intro, let's just jump right into it because there's so much information in this video that I believe that needs to be out there starting from start to finish of this video. Explaining how to spend as little as amount of money and time as possible all the way starting from your initial private pilot training all the way through the hours and ratings that you're going to need in order to get your airline pilot interview. This can be accomplished in two of two ways, part 61 and part 141. When starting out, you'll do what you're doing right now, which is getting as much information as you can for free free by watching YouTube videos. I have saved a few thousand dollars from not needing to pay for a ground school instructor just to tell me the same information that I can get from a free source, <laughs> YouTube University. You have to be careful though, especially these days, as some videos will have false or outdated information, making YouTube not entirely a credible source for aviation and folks posting videos not knowing what they're talking about, like this air nerd guy. Wait, what? Watch multiple videos on the same subject, like aviation weather is a big one, or or aerodynamics. Look for similar points being made throughout those videos that could potentially be validated as facts. In other words, if eight videos you've watched have all said Mach Tuck is the result of the center of pressure being moved aft, forcing the aircraft to pitch downward in transonic speeds, maybe you can validate this as a fact. Then do more research from there about Mach Tuck. Rinse and repeat this. Educate yourself first before so you can get ahead of your peers, whether if you're going to a part 60 or part 141 school. Part 61 is more relaxed, self-paced, sometimes a cheaper alternative to the more expensive college curriculum based part 141 schools. And get used to looking sharp as a professional pilot in the airlines, like having your shirt tucked in, being well-groomed, etc. <laughs> Not like this guy. Now he does have amazing great videos. I learned a lot from his contact, but when I saw this video of his, <laughs> This is not what a professional pilot looks like. I mean, you tell me how many times you walked in the airport and you've seen an airline pilot look like this. I mean, come on, dude, this is not a good way to represent us airline pilots, but anyway. Now, before being committed and giving your hard-earned cash to these flight schools, be sure to see if you can get your flight medical certificate. Now, I would encourage that you get your first class medical first because there's a lot of these 135 and 121 car carriers that require 121 medical anyway, so you might as well see if you can get it. Now, if you aren't able to get a first class, th there are other options like some part 135 carriers. Now, if you can't get a medical, but have a driver's license, there are other options that I've mentioned in my first how to be a pilot fast video. Click that link above to watch that if you want. A link will also be in the description if you wanna keep watching this video. Okay, so you have your medical and you have a good foundation of aviation knowledge to build up from prior to walking into the doors of that flight school. Information you can get anywhere. Now, technique is what the flight instructors will teach you. You'll take a lot of weight off their shoulders if you study and be proactive in your curriculum. Starting out, you'll be a student pilot with so many restrictions, it's crazy, but very necessary. After your discovery flight, which they'll take you up in the aircraft, you'll be flying for about maybe 30 to 45 minutes, just to give you a feel of flying for the first time. After that, you'll officially start your training. This is where your flight instructor or flight school will recommend that you get a headset, fuel sump tester, flashlight, checklist, E6B calculators, sectional maps, far aim, ACS, the Michael Hayes oral exam guides, the P-Hack. There will be so much and may be overwhelming. You don't have to splurge on all this because a lot of this stuff is free except for the physical things like a headset and the fuel tester, flight bag and all that. Check out the Sky Vector website. All the sectional maps are always up to date as well as the approach plate so you can do the fuel and course calculations all right on Sky Vector. Go to Google and look up the far aim. All the government docs are online for free. The PHAC, Aeronautics for Naval Aviators. Use Google to your advantage. When you have the money to purchase, then go ahead and purchase what you need. For example, the physical books for highlighting, for studying purposes, etc, etc. After you solo, you'll probably be studying for your written exam. Use Shepard Air. They are honestly the best resource when it comes to passing your written test. When I went through ATP CTP prior to the airlines, they actually made us use Shepard Air. Just call them up, 
purchase the $40 or $50 subscription. They'll send you a code in your email, then enter the code on your app for your mobile device or iPad or computer, and you'll get mostly the same word for word questions you'll be asked on the FAA written exam for every rating from private pilot, instrument, commercial, multi, ATP. After the rating, you'll polish up on your flying and get in the required hours and endorsements needed for your check ride. Please be prepared for this check ride. I'll leave a link in the description for what examiners love to see as well as tips to pass your check ride easily. Yes, all of them. Private instrument commercial cfi the next rating you'll probably go for is your instrument just rinse and repeat what you did for private do the same exact thing and then once you get your instrument do the same thing rinse and repeat for your commercial so on so forth now when you get all these ratings you have your private you got your instrument you got your commercial you got your multi-engine add-on this is normally like the turning point for some pilots because they don't know whether if they want to be a flight instructor they don't know if they want to do banner towing they don't want to do how am i going to get these 1500 hours to be an airline pilot the most common way to get your hours honestly is flight instructing i would personally pick flight instructing because it's you learn so much for, especially from your students and you become a better pilot while doing it too if i could do it all over again i would do it without question flight instructing is really good but it's not for everybody so you got your hours and you're ready for the airlines if you want the part 61 route start applying on the airlinepilotapps.com website not sure on which airlines to choose check out the joining the airlines what to expect video linked also in the description below long story short look at where you want to live then check the airline domiciles if you want to stay near your home and not commute that much that's where you look domicile location. If you choose a part 141 school, most likely you already know which airline you'd be going to as most of these schools have like a flow program that allows you to have priority for an interview for a 121 carrier that has a partnership with that particular flight school. After a successful airline interview, you'll soon get emailed the CJO the conditional job offer. Once you accept, you'll most likely get a class date, most likely the ATP CTP, which is about a month or so. Then they'll fly you to wherever they hold the ATP CTP course, which is where you'll transition from flying the light combing general aviation flying to jet engines in high altitude aerodynamics, stunning for the ATP written exam. Again, Shepard Air. <laughs> I can't stress that enough. After ATP CTP, they'll fly you to the training facility for that airline if it's at a different location. The initial training schedule may be something like two to three weeks of in-dock followed by four weeks of systems, then six weeks of sims depending on the sim availability, and then you'll get your check ride just the same as all your other check rides you've done, oral and then the flight. But the flight portion will be in the sim. You'll even go through IACRA and everything just the same as you've always done. Once you pass the check ride, you'll be officially type rated on the jet that you've trained for. Now some regionals will have a different training requirement such as after NDOC there may be a written test to proceed to systems class. Then only passing the systems written test then you'll be off to sims. In the sims there could be multiple checks such as maneuvers validation where you'll have to perform steep turns, stall recovery and other maneuvers. Then after that there may be an LOE, which is Line Oriented Evaluation. It's like the final check ride, and your type rating may be awarded after you complete your LOE. After that, you'll be sent home for a few days, maybe a few weeks, until your first assignment to fly in the actual jet with passengers. This is the real thing. There's no more sims. There's real people behind you now. This is the real thing. The first few flights, however, you'll be flying with a line check pilot or line check examiner or line check airman. This is where you'll do most of your learning. This period of flying is called IOE or initial operating experience. Once you're comfortable with flying and get signed off on all the items the line check pilot is required to sign you off on, you have officially made it through the training from private pilot to the airlines. I'm Ty Jones. It's time to fly.